Hello everyone, welcome back and in today's video, we are going to be covering a problem from a heat transfer. Okay, so let's start with the problem statement. So we have a cylindrical rod that is placed at a distance of 50R from an infrared point source whose power is given. So we have a light source over here, uh, which is kept at a distance of 50R and R is a radii. Okay, so it's very far away from the cylinder. The lateral surface of the rod is perfectly insulated from the surrounding. So basically there is no heat transfer uh, through the lateral surface. Okay, so the only heat transfer through the rod is because of conduction along the length of the conductor. So, and they mentioned that of the incoming radiation, only 80% of it is absorbed by the surface A. And it's given that the temperature of surface, surface A is Ta in steady state. The surface B is radiating energy into space and the wavelength emitted by it with maximum energy density is 100,000 angstrom. So we have to find the value of Ta and is also given that the conductivity of the rod varies with temperature as T divided by Ta. Okay, so it is dependent on the temperature of that particular location. And we also have to assume that rate of heat flow through the rod is steady. Okay, so this is a plot between the power density of the radiation emitted by a black body and it's plotted against different wavelength of the electromagnetic radiation. So this plot corresponds to a temperature of 4000 Kelvin and this plot corresponds to a temperature of 5000 Kelvin and this plot corresponds to a temperature of 7000 Kelvin. So as you can see, as the temperature increases, the peaks of these curves shift towards the left. So this is what the Wien's law essentially is. So it's a relation between the wavelength emitted at maximum power density. So let's say the uh, wavelength associated with the peak is lambda m. So Wien's law says that lambda m times the temperature equal to a constant, which is the Wien's constant. Okay. Okay. So essentially what Wien's law says that is the, the wavelength of light associated with the peak, it is inversely proportional to the temperatures. So as you can see, as the temperature is increasing, the wavelength associated with the peaks are decreasing. So here we have given lambda m as 100,000. The wavelength corresponding to the maximum energy density is 100,000 angstrom. So we can say 10 power 5 times 10 power minus 10 convert it into yes, SI units uh, multiplied with the temperature at point B gives the Wien's constant uh, which is given to be 0 0.003 and from here the temperature at the end B turns out to be 300 Kelvin. Uh, so now let's say the power of the light source is P. So now at any distance x the inten intensity of incoming radiation is going to be P divided by 4 pi x square because this is a point charge. So basically we can say that the intensity of incoming radiation at the point A is simply P divided by 4 pi times 50 R. Okay guys so uh, as the radius of the cylinder is R and the distance of the source from the cylinder is 50 R we can almost consider each point on this face to lie at a distance of 50R. So we can almost consider the incoming light intensity to be constant throughout this surface A. As the incoming intensity is constant, I can simply multiply it with the area of this face to get the incoming power, power that is absorbed by the surface A, P divided by 4 pi 50R squared, which is the incoming intensity, multiplied by the area of the face, which is pi R squared. Okay, so now of this incoming radiation, only 80% gets absorbed, okay, and gets conducted through the cylinder. Let's say we take a small differential ring whose width is dx and which is at a distance of x from, from the point A. So, and let's just say the temperature at this point is T. It was given in the problem that the thermal conductivity was a function of the temperature. Okay, guys, so now in the question, it was given that the rate of heat flow through the cylinder is steady. Now, what that essentially means is that the heat flow rate uh, through the cylinder, Q dot, is the same at each particular point. So if I separately draw this cross section uh, over here of width dx, essentially what it means is the heat flow rate coming from the left side must be the heat flow rate leaving the element. Basically no heat can be stored in this particular element because if it is stored in this element then that heat will have to increase the internal energy of this element and and as a result the temperature of the element will increase. Okay so at steady state we know that the temperature at each particular point is not going to change that is dt by dt is zero. So for that to happen, Q dot from the left must be equal to the Q dot to the right, which basically means the Q dot that is coming in, which we are, which we figured out over here, right? In fact, it will be 80% of this, is going to be the Q that will be incoming over here. So I can figure out this Q dot pretty easily. It will be 80%, which is 0.8. Okay, and after putting in the values, we get the Q dot as 0.1 watts. Okay guys, so the incoming radiation Q dot on the cross section, I can now write it as uh, using Fourier's law of heat conduction, it is going to be Ka dt by dx and K in this problem was given to be T divided by Ta. The area of cross section is the area of cross section of the cylinder which is pi r squared times dt by dx. 
Now here we have to keep in mind one thing guys, uh, dt by dx is negative, right? Because heat is flowing in this direction. So heat always flows from a high temperature to lower temperature. According to our convention that we took, we took x to be positive in this direction. And in the in that direction, t decreases. So t, dt by dx is negative. So we have to put a minus sign over here. So now let's rearrange all the terms. And uh, now after separating, so at x equal to zero, which corresponds to the surface A, the temperature is TA. And at x equal to L, the temperature is 300 Kelvin. And after solving the quadratic, we obtain the temperature at the at surface A as 500 Kelvin, which is the required answer. So that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, share, and subscribe. And that's it. Thanks for watching.